Hello, students. Hello, world. This is the penultimate question. Have you ever heard that word? Penultimate question means the one before last. So the 11th question out of 12, the one before last. So let's go over it. This is, again, more of a meta question, more of a thinking question. You're commenting on someone's work. Let's see. Charles says the sum of negative 28 plus 52 so the sum of negative 28 plus 52, Charles is saying, let's put a question mark because we don't know if Charles is right or wrong. Let's put a question mark. Charles says that this is negative 80. Okay, let's see. Let's, let's read further. Charles explains, so Charles explains that to find the answer, he first adds 28 and 52. Okay, so he first adds 28 and 52, and then he multiplies the sum by negative 1. Okay, so let's see. Explain, first of all, while Charles's reasoning is incorrect. First of all, is Charles correct or Charles incorrect? Negative 28 plus 52. So what do we have? We have a negative integer. We have a positive integer, and we are adding them. So this is plus plus 52. So we have negativities, we have some negativities, we have some positivities. But look at that. Do we have more negatives or do we have more positives? If I was to do the, um, the, the, the chips, if I was to draw the circles, do we have more negatives or more positives? Obviously, we have more positives. So we know that the final answer should be positive. Now, it's not going to be more positive than 52. It's going to be less positive by, than 52. How much less positive? Well... It's like we start with 52 positivities and we remove, we cancel out 28 zero pairs. And so we know that the answer, negative 28 plus 52, we know that that should be a plus 24. So this is incorrect. What, what Charles wrote, Charles's reasoning, is incorrect. And we found the answer by canceling out 28 zero pairs and uh, canceling out zero pairs and arriving at 24. Now there are six or seven different ways to show that the answer is that way. We can also do it on the number line, right? Remember Dr. K loves number line. There's a big one in the classroom. We love the number line. We can start at, let's say this is zero right here. We can start at negative 28 right here. Let's go back. We can start at negative 28 right here and then we could say uh we can say we start at negative 28 and we add we move 52 units to the to the right and where we end up where we end up is 24 because this is 52 units from here the length of the arrow the length of the movement is 52 to the right you might say, oh, Dr. K, how is that? Oh, because you move 28 units to get from negative 28 to 0, and then 24 units to get from 0 to 24. And so there are multiple, multiple ways to come up with the correct answer. And Charles's reasoning is incorrect. Charles's reasoning is incorrect. Because Charles, the problem that Charles solved is negative 28, negative 52. If that was the problem, then Charles would have gotten negative 80, and then Charles's logic would have been right. Does that make sense? Okay, number fluency, you have to get this, you have to practice, these kind of problems have to make sense, you have to be able to read a math word problem, you have to be able to annotate, you have to be able to persist, you have to be able to change your mentality from a test taker, from a test taker to a test maker, and my job, this is Dr. K, and my job is to make you a math genius, superstar math genius. Proud of you.